Hi, I'm Daniel. I review it so you don't have to. And uh, these are the 9 to 5 Warriors. They're a fairly newly released line. I've been collecting them, and I'll say right out the gate, I love them. These are fantastic figures. And I, I definitely think not only should you try to get your hands on all of these, I think... I think right now they're sold out, at least on the website and on Big Bad Toy Store, but reissues are definitely coming, and you should support their Wave 2 on Kickstarter. And there's a, even just today, as I'm recording this, dating the recording already, Daniel, come on, but we, uh, they even put up a glow-in-the-dark Commodore Crisps, which also goes towards the... Uh, Kickstarter. So that's another way to support them. But anyways, I wanted to talk about these because I feel like a lot of reviewers, they praise them and they are worth praise. However, we, I don't feel like we don't get a lot of in-depth discussion about them as the figures. We get discussion about how cool they are, but I don't feel like we get discussions and really in-depth uh, look at them. And I wanted to kind of put them under a bit of a critical eye because they are great. But in my mind, greatness means that I, uh, I allow myself to have a little more specificity. I get to be a little bit nitpicky if there's an issue. So, no, from the beginning, I love them, I recommend them. <laughs> Close the video, right now. Leave. But, to start, we're gonna go one by one. Major Eraser. He is, I believe he was the first one conceptualized uh, way back, years ago, when uh, the creator of the line was a child. I forget his name, I feel so bad. But, and now, he is... The main character, the leader of the Water Cooler Commandos, fighting against the Break Room Bandits. As you can see, he's kind of a bit of an army character. I actually have the box. I have the box for all of them, of course. But you have some great Turbo Pork art here. I'll probably be showing images, but it's really fun. It's really great. There's way more information on the back. Nickname, Eradicator. His specialty is he's a born leader and a mastery of archery and vehicles, which I suspect is probably foreshadowing to future releases. His weapons are a paperclip, bow, and arrow, which I will also be showing. And uh, his weaknesses, none besides insubordination. That can't be undone. So, he values loyalty. And, <laughs> I mean, he, he looks like it. I think my favorite thing right out the gate to get like through the praises is I love the paint used for the uh, I believe it is a pin as used like as part of his as a part of his eye patch and then there's the rubber band around his head which is really fun it just has it has great contrast with the purple shade of you know the eraser body he has this little cigar I don't even think the cigar is anything it's just a cigar I, I assume they have little uh tobacco fields in the in the office i guess i mean you know, it, it's in the potted plants you guys don't you guys don't have that in your, in your workplace on his back there is this uh this little sharpie cap which houses the other accessories he comes with which are the paperclip arrows they have little arrow heads as well i don't think these are anything either but uh he he sure as hell has them i guess he he smoked them himself i think he's a hard looking guy but, yeah. To get into some notes, his face seems oddly kind of uh, disconnected. I mean, you know, if you can see that. Yeah. Like, it's as if Scott Hensy, he Scott Hensy sculpted this, by the way. You might know him from Skeleton Warriors, TMNT. I'll have to cite myself there. I know, I know he worked on TMNT, but I don't know if he actually worked on Skeleton Warriors. But... Yeah, it's like he kind of just didn't smooth it back into the eraser. It's not a big deal. It's not any deal breaker. It's not even like not that much of a real issue. It just seems kind of an odd choice. It makes me feel like I can pop off his face and I can see his real face underneath. Maybe that's uh, why he values loyalty so much is because he's lying to everyone in his life. And that weighs on him, you know? It's hard. In his hand here, we have the aforementioned uh, paperclip bow. This is a new way, by the way. This is a new way to hold it. I've never had him hold this. While I was picking it up, this happened. And I was like, oh, that's an idea. <laughs> but yeah, usually you have it kind of up in his hand, shooting forward. Very dynamic, very fun. I think, I'm not going to say for sure. Actually, no. 
it's it, it's one of my favorite weapons that these figures come with, but it maybe isn't my favorite of them all. I'll get there when I get there. In terms of articulation, he is very simple. As to be expected, this line is heavily inspired by Food Fighters from Mattel, a line from, I believe, 1988. Um, I want to collect those figures, and I want to review them myself sometime, because I have a lot to say about them. But in short, these figures are based off of them. They're kind of a bit of a tribute line, but I didn't want to compare them too heavily. But those figures were also pretty much four-point figures. These are four-point figures. Yeah, looking over them all, they're all four points. None of them, none of them have, you know, even head movement. I'll talk about it. But for Major Razor, let me just take out his stuff here. He has a swivel at the arm, swivel at the arms, and these T-style hips can go all the way forward like so. You can kind of get them. You, well, okay. <laughs> you can't totally get him sitting down. If you have something behind him, can lean back on his uh, enemy, potential lover, if you know. That's the trend I notice with these with these franchises. The enemies, there's chemistry here. <laughs> but you know, you can kind of get him to sit back. I've, I've taken shots where he's sitting, but you know, it's possible. It can go all the way forward, so you can get him groveling, you know? I mean, his team just died, dead. His enemies have won. You know, they're about to they're about to take everything from him. They're closing in. All hope is lost, really. I mean, they've lost the office space. They've lost everything. And the most the worst thing for a general is to watch his troops die, and that's what's happened. But you know, he could also just be looking for something. You know, he uh, he 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 dropped his glasses and he's finding it. And Scotchy, he just got knocked over. You know, that's also possible. It's a Saturday morning cartoon, guys. Come on, parents are going to complain. They'll kill us. But, yeah, I mean, he is, actually, out of all of them, I feel like he has the most dynamic movement. He has this... This is something you learn, I think, if you collect vintage toys more, is that just because they are lower... You know, they aren't, like, Mafex figures. They don't have all these swivels. They don't have the diaphragm joints. That does not mean they're not posable. That does not mean these are statues. They're very much still, you know, they're figures. And you can pose them. I mean, I, I just showed you. He can get on his knees. I've had, I've posed him running. I've posed him, like, kind of, like, trying to yell. You can do things with him. You can really set up scenes. It is about your creativity and your ingenuity, especially with this line. I'll talk about that later. But Major Razor, I would say, to give, like, a short word. I think that if you're going to collect nobody else in this line, you're going to get one figure, and that's it, and this line doesn't really interest you too much. Get Major Razor. He's the guy everything is surrounded around, and I, uh, frankly, I think he might be the best of these. I mean, I, I, I like the rank, like these little uh, guys, so I'll probably do that at the end, but <laughs> there's a little spoiler. I think he's the best, and I have fun with him all the time. I take him out uh, to my classes all the time, Pose him around. Well, I usually take him, him, someone else. He's so much fun. All right, now to hop over to the break room bandits. Obviously, the evil doers. <laughs> we have Colonel Custard. Um, I have some words for him because there are things I love, love, love about this figure. There are things that I think are maybe the best of the line so far. I guess the wave. Um, and there are things that. Kind of annoy me every time I pick him up. There are things that I feel like hinder him in ways that are frustrating, in ways that contrast with Major Razor. Anyways, so I want to first talk about how much I love this head sculpt. It's very expressive. Early on, he had a different face. It was a little, it was just a little more of like mild agitation, maybe a displeasure. I just told him we're out of fries, and he's like the delivery guy, like. Getting someone's orders like, what the fuck do you mean you're out of fries? But, you know, now, I mean, he's, he's out to kill me. I'm fearful for my life. Um, he has sprinkles, which are fun. I like that they're multicolored. I feel like it would have been easy if they were all one color and it would have made the color palette a little more monotonous. But having it both be red and blue is also nice. Contrast nicely with the green, contrast with the purple. It's well done. 
He has these yellow eyes, these bags. I like the same paint for the bags as the eyebrows. It's a nice color usage. I appreciate that. He has ooze in there. I would not eat him. It, it looks rotten. He is venomous. On his hands, he does have these blade things. I guess they're supposed to be like his weapons, but they don't work as weapons. They needed to come off his hand. That's the thing. At least on this hand. But, yeah. Getting into it. Actually, with his accessories. As you might have been able to catch on. You're, you're, I'm about to blow your mind. Yeah. Yeah. Check that shit out. <laughs> um, his dick can come off. You can have a, uh, a circumcised Colonel Custard. And you might have been in the catch earlier that he was kind of leaning over a bit. The cape is a little bit taller than, like, his torso. So while you can kind of pose him, you need to be... He's a bit finicky. You can't get it done. You can get him kind of looking up a bit more. But it can be annoying. And I think this is a remnant of when these figures had joints in their legs. This cape was probably sculpted with him fully extended, fully standing in consideration. And because he's not anymore, you know, now he has this... Wah! Now he has this little kind of bend to his knee. You know, now, as you can see, I picked him up, put him down, and now he's kind of... The cape pushes him back. You know, now he... The cape, just doesn't, it doesn't fit him quite as well. As well as that, I am a bit disappointed with uh, his accessory. It's this... And to be upfront, this is maybe... He holds on to it well, but... This is one of the most creative and fun accessories. I love it. You know, the shield, I love that it has this hole here because it helps, it doesn't obscure his face too much when he's holding it. You know, you can, it, it, it doesn't fully like block him out from a lot of angles, which is nice. Yeah, some you can even like see his eye through that. That's nice, that's cool. Um, my thing though is that it's just all he comes with and I can't really pose him attacking. There are um, a stop. There's a stop motion little commercial promo video where they show him kind of throwing it like Captain America, but he can't hold it on its side. At least I don't know how to get him to do that, but I don't know. It just it limits the amount of poses I can put him in. I feel like to pose him, I need to I need to take off his. Yeah, you know, I need to take everything off of him. And that's okay. It's fine. He still looks nice either way. And I think there is, like, whoa, there is value to taking the cape off. It's kind of like he's, he's throwing away the gravitas of the situation. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to wrestle you to death. I'm going to beat you. I'm going to kill you with hammers. But, you know, he's, he's not as poseable as the others is what I'm getting at. Overall, though, I still think he's a great mustache. He's still a fantastic figure. He's just not as... He's not as fun, personally. But I still love him. He has maybe one of my favorite sculpts of the line. I mean, I just love this face. I love this kind of... Like, the, the caricature work. Food Fighters was very akin to the California Raisins. At least to me, in terms of style. I actually don't know if they share any, like, literal creative DNA. And this isn't quite like that, but it doesn't need to be quite like that. It's still beautiful as it is, and I love it. Damn it. I also find myself kind of wishing that, you know, I wish he... I wish I could uh, swivel around his shield. Because, you know, what if I want this, this opening to be in a very specific spot? What if I want it facing perfectly up? You know, I just kind—I'm of, kind of stuck at this angle. Not bad per se. Um, it's a minor thing, but you know, if you have a Captain America figure, sometimes you kind of just wish that the star would be straight up when he's holding it, or you know, you want it to be positioned a certain way for a pose. That's kind of what I wish was happening here, but no issue really. But now, getting to what I think is one of the most interesting figures to talk about from this line, Commodore Crisps. Now. Him and Major Razor were the first I got, and then I got uh, Colonel Custard and Tech Sergeant Scotchy. 
on a uh, on a different day. But I had I had a lot of fun. I didn't. I won't say I had the most fun. I definitely do think Major Razor is the most fun of them all. But Tex Sergeant, not Tex Sergeant, sorry. A Commodore Crisp is definitely a close second. He is fantastic. And he has maybe, I think, the best weapon of the bunch. It's a very simple weapon. It's just an exacto blade spear kind of situation. But here's what's fun about it, is that it kind of changes the way he's holding it. If he's holding it up, and he has both his hands up, you know, oh, he's celebrating. You know, he's he has killed him savagely, <laughs> brutally. And, you know, when you put it down, kind of looks like he's, uh, he's running them along. You know, hey, keep moving, pal. It, it's, it's so minor, but these things really do go a long way for photography means. It's just nice to have these, these movements, all this kind of built in, so, you know. Doing a lot with the Lewis, well, as I said. But the main draw of this figure isn't just that, you know, he that he, you know, his arms do in fact swivel and his weapon looks good in multiple poses. It is this. He, yeah. He uh he splits into three. It's on a pretty simple system. The feet of any one of these pegs into this, the him to them. You get the idea. But it's just it's just fun. It makes for a lot of really creative pictures you can take. I always love to have one split off. And that's the, uh, and that's the, and that's like the deviant. And the other two have to kind of fetch him. You know? um, I think his character bio says that he's a, he's, a, he's a kooky guy because, you know, being regularly split into three people or being three people puppeting a whole not always uh, conducive to a uh, cohesive thought. I think my favorite might be the bottom one. I really like the legs guy. He is very goofy. He's got that, uh, he's got the doofy smile. I mean, I just love the base expression to begin with, but he's great. The second one here, he's still pretty cool. I mean, he gets the uh, the arms, which is his big advantage. He has his mouth done here. Um, He's fun. I mean, you know, I like him. Uh, I guess he's, his utility is almost always that he has the spear, I guess. You know, he has his arms. It's a big one. Um, I guess out of the three out of the three pieces of him, he might be the one I enjoy the least. But I mean I still love him. I just think the others are kinda of a little more. I look at them and I think I think they're funnier and I think they're goofier. I like I, I just enjoy him more. Then you have this guy at the top. He, I guess he's the least dynamic. He doesn't get any joints, he's just the top. But he's fun. I mean, I, I like that he seems... Obviously, he has to be squished because he has to get put in there. It makes me feel like it's very cramped. Like, I get, I bet it gets stuffy. Like, you know, at least this guy has, you know... He has his mouth out. He has the eyes. This guy's nothing. He just sits there and he waits. So he's... He's not living the good life in there, you know? Oh, damn. Well, yeah, see? He's so used to... He's so used to laying down that he gravitates towards it. It's tragic. Commodore Crisp has very simple articulation... But it is the articulation I have the most issue with. Because his arms are great. You know, these bent elbows, they make for good poses. Um, you know, you can have him lifting his fist up in the air. I guess you can have him, like, doing it back. That's a pretty nice pose. Like, if he's running. Well, I'll get to that. Um, and obviously, as I said, you know, with the spear, this arm is really nice. The legs, however, are a problem. Because they aren't on any kind of... All these other figures are on generally on... Uh, T-shape joints, which just means, you know, they go front and back. These are just on swivels, so they just go around. And not only does it, yeah, it makes it hard for standing, and it just doesn't do for a lot. I mean, I can't get him doing much of anything. Like, yeah, even though I did that, I'm, I'm going to have to, like, kind of put him back into like the the position for standing I, yeah see and it's kind of frustrating because i wish i could have this guy running i wish i could have him doing all these sorts of wacky things but he's stuck with his legs effectively in this position because 
nothing else is going to do much. I guess I could angle him outwards, and that could be like him on his knees, but it's limited. It's quite limited, and I wish that... I wish these were kind of just ball joints, honestly, because I, I don't think I'd be out of the question. I, I guess uh, the bottom guy, he also has arms. That's a remnant. I forget about them all the time, but they're down there. He technically, I guess, has four arms. Actually, the four arms at any given time. He restrains himself. He knows it'd be too powerful. I also have to do this. Just peeking through. I imagine he does this sometimes to freak people out. Hey. But yeah, Commodore Crisp. He's one of my favorites. He... Has a lot of great. He's at, he's lacking a bit in detail, like sculpt detail. He has the you know the bumps for the crisps, but he's still great. I love his expression the most. He's very goofy. He's very simple, but he's very fun. Um, him and Major Razor, I think, are the dream team here. And last but not least, we have Tech Sergeant Scotchy. So he is a. Uh, He's a tape dispenser. He's technically on his side. It's it's tape dispenser isn't quite how it works. It should be more like this, but who cares? And I really love this because I think we all have seen, you know, we've all seen the the plaid tape dispenser, but it it's just it's a perfect way to capitalize on the pre existing design. Now, something I immediately noticed was you know human face. And I'm, it, it makes sense the more I looked at it because, you know, you can easily integrate face in this. And this, the only way to do that is make this the face. And I think that they're avoiding the cliche because that would be having whole in object be mouth, I think is very cliche. And it kind of takes away from the whole being Scottish angle. You can't really work Scotsman into this without getting weird about it. And I, I ultimately, I think it's fine that they use the human face. For articulation, just jumping right into that. He has... Let me get into focus. He has pretty simple swivels here at the arms. Here at the legs. Um, there are... Oh, yeah, he can sit. He can sit actually great. Great sitting poses. This guy can sit all day. If I didn't trust anybody, if I, didn't, if I said sit down, you can kind of get him in the... That's not running, but, you know, it's something. And, yeah, the, the skirt does not actually hinder him that much. You can't get stuff done. The skirt does seem to be a softer plastic, which is nice. Doesn't get in the way. Very formidable. It also has a nice sculpt to it. The pattern in it is sculpted, whereas it's printed here, which I guess makes sense. It's printed on the real thing. Um, I, I suppose I've been ignoring it for a bit, but... Here we have his... uh. His ray gun, his little invention. This is Tech Sergeant Scotchy, after all. He invents things. And he has invented a battery with some pins taped to it. This is powerful. This could this could kill a man, Scotchy. Be, be fucking careful with this dude. You're gonna, you're gonna poke someone's eyes out and blow it off their head at the same time. That's gonna suck, right? It's insult to injury. That's what it is. <laughs> I love it. It might be my favorite weapon, details-wise. The shield is the most creative and nice. The paperclip one, I think, it's the most all-around. It's creative, but it's also kind of expected. It's nice. It's cute. The spear has the most utility, but this is just looks nice. It's the most creative. It's the most fun. I enjoy it. I can't recall if the... I, I can't recall. It's there in front of me. I can't tell if the paint for the end of the battery is the same as used for Major Rager's eye patch, but I wish that it looked a little more like it. Maybe it's just the the shape. I know the shape obviously can influence that, but I guess it wish it looked a little bit shinier, a little more dramatic, a little more metallic, I suppose. Just going with how I remember batteries to look, but I'm not going to get too picky about does this look like the real thing or not. Um, it still looks good. It's just a little bit of a note. Something I noticed when looking at it. I was like, oh, that could, I guess that could be look a little more like the real battery. His articulation, while being standard for the line, I don't think plays out as... It, it doesn't have as much utility. You know, you can point the gun up and down. 
You can kind of swivel it in his hand a bit. You can, you know, you can get it pointing inward. Because you can have like, I guess it's like, yeah, it's it's under rest. He's not using it right now. This is when he's uh he's talking to you peacefully. But he's letting you know that he he can't use that. Yeah, you can face it outwards. This is good for shelf poses. But you know that's uh that's kind of it. You can put it up, down, in, out. Not too bad, not too shabby. This arm, however, I I haven't really found a use for it. You know, I mean, I guess when he's like panicking, put it up in the air. But it's just kind of there. And honestly, I wish he had something extra to put in there, like a wrench. I mean, I wish he could be holding something else. I don't think another. I think another gun would have been redundant, but. Look, that's something else I want to say. I think that almost all these figures, maybe there could have been another accessory. Colonel Custard, I think, honestly, I think he kind of needs another accessory. I think he, uh, let me get him in frame. He could really use something in this hand. It's open. He can put, I think he can hold the shield in both hands. But it would just be nice, you know, if he could hold two things. Especially because he's the leader of the bandits. If anybody's going to hold two things, someone's going to be as so blessed to be able to allow to behold two objects at once, it's him. He's selfish like that. I think that Major Razor is pretty satisfactory with his bow. I wouldn't be hurting if he had something else, though. And um, Commodore Crisp just has a closed fist, so he can't hold anything else. I guess that I'm, obviously that could have been changed, but, you know. Is what it is, and I'm satisfied with you know, spear, anyways. But in the end, I love these guys, I love them so much. I've bought into this line 100%, and I recommend you do too. These are great figures if you love Team and T, if you love Skeleton Warriors. I really recommend you go at them. If I had to rank them, Major Razor is definitely the best, he's the most fun, he's the most versatile. And everything about him just works in great harmony. He feels like a great encapsulation of everything the line is. Second best, in my mind, has to be um, Commodore Crisps. Splitting apart is really fun. His weapons, probably, I think, the best out of all of them. His articulation woes aren't enough to dissuade me from him. I still have fun, and when he split them up, it doesn't matter as much. But, you know, I wish I could get him running, at least. Third, I would say a Sergeant Scotchy. Even though he doesn't do a ton, he kind of makes up for it. If you have these guys in public, their posability goes way up because, you know, their accessories are anything you can find. So this guy, you can have a lot of fun with him. I, I took Major him and Major Razor out one day, and there's a lot of cute photos I took, and I really enjoy those. Um, and I guess coming in last is Colonel Custard. I love him nonetheless. Love all these guys. They're all fantastic. But Colonel Custard, I couldn't get him as fun poses. I couldn't... I just couldn't do as much with him. And as much as I love his sculpt, and I think he might have one of the most impressive face sculpts of the line, it just doesn't quite make up for it. And there's there's even some annoyances with him I have that I have. You know, Wave 2 is currently on Kickstarter. They're a little over halfway there as of now. Um, as of recording, at least. Maybe when maybe when I publish this, it's just going to be done. And it, I'm, I'm talking for nothing, but I'll, I'll, maybe I'll uh, put in a note. But these guys are great. Really check them out. If you love Team and T, if you love any vintage toy line, really, especially if you love Food Fighters, if you love Food Fighters, I don't even. I don't, why are you even watching this? Like, go out. I assumed you were already convinced. Go. And of course, um, yeah, have a good day. This is my first review, and I hope it turns out well.